If you want to understand more about being church and not just going to church, it may be helpful to look at the differences between the university classroom and the apprenticeship model found in guilds. Education began as a small and personal experience. A teacher would gather their students around them to educate and discuss. As universities grew larger and attracted more students, some teachers needed their physical classroom space to grow larger in order to accommodate more people. Eventually, after the invention of the microphone and public address speakers, it became possible to expand a classroom to hundreds, even thousands. For some types of lecturing and teaching, auditoriums remain an effective way to educate. Still, there are other trades where an auditorium lecture falls short. If you want to learn how to make knives, for instance, a lecture hall does little to prepare a student for success. Instead, an apprenticeship within a blacksmith guild proves to be a much more useful learning environment. Fashioned after medieval guilds, these modern learning communities offer students of all skill levels a place to learn hands-on from master craftsmen and even from other students further along in their own training. Rather than sitting and listening to a teacher from afar, they are able to interact, ask questions, gain experience, and learn from their failures and successes. The church has also followed these two basic models for gathering and learning over 2,000 years. Some of the first buildings we might call churches began as synagogues and schools. Followers of Jesus would meet, learn, and debate together around a wise teacher or noted rabbi. This has led to a never-ending tendency toward hierarchy and formality in worship. However, people no longer participate in the way they did in the early days. It can seem as the holy world is kept at arm's length from the real world, and the heavenly banquet table is now carefully prepared by professionals. Imagine what would happen if we really freed our leaders who are interested in cultivating small batch church to set up shop outside. Our leadership has to be willing to unshackle creative leaders to engage in the work of God's kingdom. We are invited by Christ and the Holy Spirit to leave the building and go out into the real world with the living, risen Lord, who even now is in the community, already at work. The church will have to proclaim in word and deed the commandments of our God, to love our neighbor as Jesus loves us. We must be fearless in taking our place in the public square, throwing aside the notion that religion and faith are private matters. Through invitation, partnership, and participation, we must remap the streets and public spaces as venues for liturgy and life of the church beyond the walls. The church will have to seek a non-violent immersion with the world outside its walls, no matter how persecuted it may be. This will mean that just as the world around us is organically connected, so too will our organizations need to be organic and rich with networks that connect us through the world. We are going to have to let go and return to a rich and diverse understanding of community life and growth. How can you encourage kingdom movements outside the walls of the church building?